I'm gonna I'm gonna just keep it as simple as possible here. Like when we say the an intro to cognitive behavioral therapy, let's start with like what is cognitive behavioral therapy? And yeah, the CBT 101 is that CBT is a framework for therapy. It's amazing for therapists in terms of conceptualizing the issues they're working on with clients. And if I had to say it in a couple of sentences, it's basically that we're looking at the connection between people's thoughts, which affect their moods, which affect their behavior, physical symptoms, all happening within the context of one's environment. So actually within the handout, there's a worksheet that people can actually fill out, like they can stop and think about their situation now and say, okay, environment, what's happening in my environment? Pandemic, <laughs> maybe I'm a healthcare worker or I'm a teacher, I'm a mom and my kids are out of school. Like what are the factors in your environment? And then what are the thoughts going through your head? What are your emotional reactions? What are the physical symptoms? You know, a lot of people these days, they might have tightness in their chest, you know, stomach aches, all kinds of different things. Um, and then what are their behaviors? You know, do some people at work, say in a busy hospital setting, notice that they're withdrawing from their colleagues when they're stressed, they're not as, you know, engaged or connected anymore, um, you know, some parents might notice, oh, I'm really short tempered with my kids. I'm raising my voice more. You know, I heard one, you know, recently a really like lovely client of mine say it's so easy to start, you know, getting mad at our kids for being upset because we're all home together all the time and we're trying to work and take care of them. So that exercise really helps people to kind of conceptualize where they're at. But the whole CBT premise is that the way we think affects how we feel. If we learn to balance our thoughts, it's not about saying some thoughts are good or bad, but just more evidence-based thinking, balancing them out, then we can better regulate our mood. Again, not saying that moods are good or bad, it's okay to be sad, it's okay to be angry, but we can reduce our suffering. And when we do that, we can be in better control of our behaviors and our physical symptoms, like we hopefully suffer less. So, you know, in terms of partnering with you to bring this to solving wellness. I'm so worried about everyone right now, but in particular, we really need to build resiliency amongst healthcare workers because they do this job of taking care of other people, not just like our hospital staff for sure, um, but there's just so many people in that boat right now needing good skills to manage their own stress um, so that they can have quality of life for themselves and still love the work they do. Amazing. I think that, that was very well put in terms of summarizing the, you know, what CBT is and, and thinking about the steps. So like environment, physical reaction, mood, how, mm -hmm. you, how you feel, your behaviors around that and, and your thoughts around that. Yeah. And maybe just because... Uh, <clears throat> Maybe I'm oversimplifying things, but even just walking through an example um, with a common healthcare provider, maybe um, I don't know if uh, maybe I, if you need me to be an example, if you or do you if, if you have uh, something common in your head in your head. Come up. Um, yeah, actually, I was thinking about that as we came on. What would be a good example? And I did think of an example you shared once in a podcast where you were talking about like coming in, you're on the phone, you have your lunchbox, and you put it down. And someone says to you, now I have to sanitize that yes. surface. Yes. So that's a good example um, where, of course, you are going to have your own, maybe even somatic reaction, like a physical reaction that um, we call it in mindfulness. One of my main mindfulness teachers who I learned so much from, he always talks about co-emergence, like your co-emergence as your emotions come out, so are the physical reactions. You know, some people might get lightheaded when they're really traumatized. You know, maybe you, you might get this like anger and a visceral reaction. Do you remember what thoughts went through your mind? Yes, I remember thinking, Jesus Christ, number <laughs> one, like I'm starting my day with this. You, you can't get COVID from a lunchbox. I'm sorry. And so it was a, a bit of frustration and a bit of anger. Um, and so, yeah, feeling it in the chest feeling like more warm and uh, yeah, have a lot of frustration. 
And if we peel back the layers of your thoughts there, and this is part of what we do in CBT because, and not everyone does it, some people balance out their automatic. So we call those negative automatic thoughts that, geez, what is he thinking? And that's not true, that's not right. Um, so those are like the surface level negative automatic thoughts. And we like to sometimes use a short form like NAT, negative, like gnats. They're like little bugs, you know, pestering you. A lot of them around these days when I go for a walk. Um, but underneath those thoughts, those little thoughts, they come from what we call our underlying assumptions. So those are like the hidden rules we live by. And they're often in the form of if then. So for example, someone who has a thought like, if people don't understand how we actually get COVID, then life is never going to go back to normal. Not, not speaking for you, but say you had a thought like that. Yeah, you yeah. could see where that would lead to like, oh my God, like, no, my lunchbox is not gonna give you COVID. Um, and then, but we have all kinds of underlying assumptions about ourselves, about other people, about the world. And then at a deeper level, they come from our core beliefs. So I often use like a plant analogy and this is in the handout. Um, and by the way, a lot of this material can be found in an amazing manual to CBT. It's called Mind Over Mood, excellent book. And we use it in our resiliency boot camp course along with our own workbook. But so if you think about a plant, the roots are the core beliefs. These form when we're very young. In fact, it's quite worrisome, the kind of core beliefs about themselves, about other people and about the world that children and adolescents could be developing these days, as if life wasn't already ripe with opportunity for negative core beliefs. Um, and then those negative core beliefs, they lead to these rules we live by if then, um, if I if I don't excel at school, then people will be disappointed in me. If I um, drop out of school because I hate quadmester, then I'll never have a good job. I'll never end up going back. You know, like there's all these assumptions. And again, people make them about other people. So like you could have another healthcare example of like, super busy shift at work, people all trying to pull together, but tensions come back the next day, maybe a nurse who's newer on the floor passes by a coworker. She doesn't say she or he doesn't say hi. What kind of negative thoughts go through your head? If you think to yourself, oh, she didn't say hi. Well, who knows what it is? Maybe she was distracted. Maybe she didn't recognize me in my mask. Maybe then you might settle and be okay. But if you think, oh, she didn't like the work I did yesterday, or he really thinks I messed up. They, they're not happy I came to work on this unit. You could just imagine the way it then affects your mood, anxiety, anger, or panic, and affects your behavior. Maybe you don't try chatting to people. Maybe you hang back. Maybe you get nervous, and you don't do your job properly, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so when you do go through the process, you know, like, as we talked about, um, you know, going through the environment, physical reaction, mood, behavior, thoughts, like just at a basic level, what do you do with that info? Like, what do you, how do you process it? You know? Well, so one of the main things about CBT is that if your therapist really understands what CBT is about, I have to say over the years, I've met a number of clients who are like, oh, I tried CBT. I didn't really like it. We just did breathing exercises. And I'm like, that's not true CBT. You know, I was really lucky. I was in therapy, just saying our thoughts out loud, people start to challenge them. Sometimes it's like as a therapist, you, you don't even have to work that hard. You just ask thoughtful questions. Oh, what was going through your mind when you felt so anxious? And then as people hear themselves open up and I might encourage them and say, you know, sometimes the craziest thoughts are the most important ones. Don't dismiss them. You might not believe them 100%, but if they pop up, you believe them to some extent. Um, and so as people say them out loud, they might already start to challenge them. But that's a big part of what we do in CBT is we look at evidence. We say, and there's thought records we use, but again, sometimes it just happens conversationally. We say, okay, there's that negative automatic thought. No one at work likes me. Say you have a really negative thought like that. Okay, where's the evidence? And then we might do an exercise where we say, okay, let's go through all your evidence and say, is it a fact or is it interpretation? Okay, mm -hmm. it's a fact my colleague didn't say hi to me, but my colleague doesn't like me. Is that an interpretation? Like same as with the lunchbox on the surface example you gave. Mm -hmm. Say, um, 
you know, you're having this negative reaction and you think to yourself, like, he thinks I'm an idiot or he thinks he knows better than me, right? Like, I'm not saying you said that, but say those kinds of angry thoughts went through your head. Well, I mean, you'll never know for sure. But if you calm yourself and you're like, okay, this guy's trying to do his job or maybe he thinks differently than me. Maybe he has OCD and he's a germaphobe. I'll never know for sure. But if I consider these alternative possibilities, my mood probably settles down. Absolutely. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And I mean, I, I don't know how to label this or what the term is, but I, I'll, I'll be honest, in that moment, this is kind of uh, being married to a psychologist, I guess, advantage. I, I was, He's you know, you, happy, yeah. She, yeah. You, you just put your, like, we're very um, egocentric. We always think like the world is kind of sur- like revol- revolving around our thoughts and our actions. And, you know, like her doing that thing with the lunchbox has nothing to do with me. That's right. That's just, you know what I mean? And, and to, and you're right. Like a part of the anger is you're going to personalize something, something to a certain degree. But once you start being a little bit, step outside of ourselves and really, uh, really ask yourself, is this, you know, an interpretation or a true, like, or an action there? And, uh, and so I think this is fantastic. 